like that, then you should be able to hear me again. But then if I press this button and continue to talk, you should... Audio sync. Well, that was supposed to turn the music off. We're gonna have to. We're gonna have to fix that later. <laughs> uh, welcome back to Barbell Method. My name's Patrick, and today I'll be your body mechanic. Is that too much? <laughs> Uh, well, this episode, episode four of Body Maintenance, we're going to be talking about sitting, shoes, and squats, um, how they're all related, how they affect you, and how most likely the information you have about it's wrong. So right there, I'd have a really cool, like, you know, my logo would come in and something, and it'd be sweet, and you'd be like, wow, that was a really cool transition, and I just haven't made it yet. But imagine it was there, right? It would have been really cool. Nevertheless, we're moving on. Um, we are going to confirm a few things so that I don't make any mistakes like I have in the past. 
one of which is a hey, we have multiple audio resources recording so that in the event that I'm fat fingered and press that mute button over there you guys can still hear what's happening as I repost it to another place like YouTube because I can upload that secondary audio source uh, so that it's not a complete waste for anybody else and that is confirmed we got my phone recording obviously we're recording here and I can see that the audio is recording and I'm getting a little bit of feedback now to know for sure that that is coming through um, the music is muted there should be nothing coming through on your end see Spotify rolling there we're gonna go ahead and turn that down just in case and in the beginning there we were testing a few things I wanted to see uh, as I'm adjusting the faders here, if that's affecting the audio level. And obviously, what is that on your end? Was it too loud? Was it blowing your eardrums, right? We don't want you to be uh, bleeding out of any holes uh, in your body. Definitely if they're not, if they're located close to your head. <laughs> uh, but any holes also bad. Anyway, <laughs> that's working. So mic's good. Audio's good. Music is muted, turned down. And uh, second audio source, check. First thing on the list is um, a basic squat test, okay? Before we start talking about sitting or the stuff you choose to put on your feet or what your options are even to select from to put on your feet, right? Um, and how all of that ultimately affects your squat. But why is that, real? why do I care about all this other stuff you're about to say? Well, let's find out, right? So first basic squat test, we're gonna get ourselves an open space Okay, um, the concept we have to understand is what I use uh, with a lot of my, the people that come see me is the bucket of water or uh, mainly what, we're, what it is, is a neutral spine, right? Um, so to establish a neutral spine, you just find yourself a spot, you get set up where your uh, feet are about shoulder width apart, right? You're going to take a deep breath, we're going to shrug up, roll it back, then we're going to exhale. We're going to let it out, okay? This is a neutral spine, right? I'm going to do it again from the side, right? Because we're likely like this because we're all sitting at computers all day or we're standing for a long time and our core gets tired and we just hang on stuff, right? So uh, instead of hanging on these joint capsules or whatever, wherever else we're going to um, transfer that load to the, in the body, right? We're going to reestablish neutral spine periodically throughout the day. It's an all-day workout. Just like anything else that we do if we choose to pursue uh, a sport where it requires training or whatever, it's uh, all-day, everyday practice, right? It's a shift that we make. These aren't moves that we only do in the gym or during the sport, what you're learning here is how to properly move your body to maximize your effort, diminish the resources required to produce that effort, and remove the uh, excessive wear and tear on wherever, whatever's being used, and the potential for injury, right? These are all things that everybody wants and needs, okay? When you go to the gym and you have a coach, and coaches, make sure you're telling your people this too. They're, you know, The thing that we're doing is we're teaching you how to properly move your body and how to attach the breath to that movement, how to brace properly. How, you know, All of this teaching and learning that's happening applies to your whole life. It's not just when I lift. It's not just when I'm playing my sport, right? Uh, so with that in mind, neutral spine all day every day it's a workout right it's not like oh that person like i'm so jealous they got awesome you can work on it too right here's how you do it we're here we take a deep breath in we're going to shrug our shoulders kind of forward and up in that loop we're going to round them all the way back you can even twist an external rotation to enhance it and then you're just going to relax it all down and let it fall i'm not necessarily retracting all my muscles and pinching my back I'm just getting up and over that hunch because I'm right. So I'm trying to extend it out, stretch it and reach it. And then we're going to reset it in a good neutral position and try to relax into that. 
stop uh you know seek see take note of where the where you're resisting that position and get it to relax right the objective isn't to squeeze new muscles to hold new position right i mean in some cases you might kind of have to fumble with some stuff the objective is to feel position know where tension is in position right and then tell it to relax, <laughs> right? Say, stop resisting. Just be cool, right? We're here. Deep, deep breath in. Shrugging them up and around. And then we let them down. <sighs> neutral spine, okay? Whether you're standing or you're sitting, you have to have a neutral spine before you can do anything else. So with a neutral spine, we're going to get our feet shoulder width apart, hip width apart, and we're going to do a squat, okay? All we're going to do is think about taking our bucket of water, which is your torso, right? And if this is my bucket of water, if I start doing this, then I'm dumping out my water, right? Water comes out of the bucket. So keep your bucket of water upright, and then try to take that water bucket and set it straight down right between your two feet, right? These are my feet. I'm trying to set my bucket on the ground right between them, right? So here's my bucket of water, right? I'm here. Yeah, I don't know where the best way is for that. Maybe something like this. Uh, so, you know, I'm here, shoulder width, hip width, maybe a little wider. This is going to be different for everybody, okay? Technically, you should be able to keep your feet straight, right? Your, your ankle's a, a gliding joint just like your wrist capsule is. They're the same thing. They should be capable. Like, I can, I can pin my hand and I can still twist my forearm a little bit, right? It's supposed to glide. Most of us <laughs> ignore our feet and ignore any TLC related to keeping that uh, range, of, range of motion available to us, that uh, functionality available to us, because we sit all day, we ignore our feet, we ignore our calves, right? Um, so technically, yes, you should be able to keep them straight. Most people are going to toe out, okay? But when we toe out, we need to keep it within a window. When I'm thinking like zero to like seven degrees, right? That's going to be different for everybody. It's also going to be the, the width is also different. It's not a cookie cutter, okay? Everybody's hip structure is different, period. And when I say different, I don't mean like a different color. I mean the construction is different, okay? Like some people are more deep or more shallow, and it's going to uh, restrict certain ranges of motion or uh, like if you try to replicate a person's squat you're like oh i just can't it's like yeah because it is jamming up like you're not your body's not designed to move that way now there's a test we can lay you down i can figure out you know we can figure out what exact what exactly that position is but it's your body's real smart and give yourself some credit you know your body just say what feels good and kind of just let your body figure it out and the way we're going to do that is we're going to go down slow right? And then whatever little micro adjust, like if I'm going and I get stuck, we're just going to chill. And we're going to just kind of wiggle and make little micro adjustments and then continue moving down. That's the objective. The objective is to feel your hamstrings and your calf muscles touching each other. Okay. And what you can do, if you want to, uh, uh, to provoke that, you can smack like legit, like <laughs> smack that, that spot that chunk of leg right here behind your knee going up in your calf and then smack the top part of your calf bam, 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 to stimulate it so you say, oh gosh, like something just whacked me. It's all sensitive. Then as you squat, you'll, have a, you'll be sensitive and you'll feel them touch each other. And that's how you'll know that my hip crease has descended below my knee, right? My knee crease. That's how we achieve full depth in a squat. Now, there, there are obviously, for different sports and different uh, training objectives, uh, different squat variations. If your objective is primarily strength gain, power gain, overall health and fitness of the body, the joints, etc., uh, building muscle mass, any of those big things, full range of motion is what you want to do. Um, there are different types of rack positions that will... Uh, shift around what the primary focus of muscle muscle group focus is right but for the most part 
full depth is always going to be hip crease below the knee crease in a discussion, right? We're going to feel that by smack, 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 smack. Now I know when I get down there and I feel them touching, hey, I'm, I'm below the crease, right? So hip width apart might be wider, might be, you're not going to match everybody. Toes might be a little different, right? But be smart. What, what's comfortable for you? Pay attention, right? We're here, right? For me, I know I like to toe out just a little. Um, for my particular size, even though I'm a taller, because I'm narrow, my squat stance is pretty narrow. Like, I, even though I'm taller than a lot of people, you'd think I would squat way out here. And I've seen people, I have people, I have people that are super short that have ridiculously wide squat stances, right? Um, for me, I'm, I tend to be more narrow, but you're here somewhere relatively um, your hips. Imagine your hips kind of splitting your foot in half. You know, that's a good start point. Toe out, I don't want to see this, right? This is too far, right? And when you see people walking like this, it means they have weak arches. They're those people, oh, you got flat feet. Eh. And by the way, if you've ever been told you have flat feet and said that you had to wear um, prescription arches the rest of your life, you've been lied to. You can strengthen your feet. You can fix that. Now, be honest with yourself. If I have 30 years worth of damage because I wore those freaking uh, braces, like, you, you know, that's the equivalent of wearing a wrist brace every day, right? I've been doing that for 30 years. How long is it going to take me to undo that damage and then strengthen and make it better? Another 30 to go back the other way? Half the time? 15, right? Be realistic about certain fitness things that you pursue. That doesn't mean we're, it, it's futile to pursue it. You're going to see astronomical uh, changes in your performance, which can affect you in a bunch of different positive ways when you start aligning yourself in a way where you're taking care of everything, right? Where you're doing your regular body maintenance, it's going to enhance your energy level. You're going to see your positive growth in every aspect of your life right? You're fo focusing on the foundation of everything you are, right? It's, you're not your job title. You're not your, the piece of paper you got from college. You're not what, who your mom and dad said you are. Your friends think you are. You're, you're who you make yourself to be, right? So just like everything else, you got to maintain this body maintenance and make yourself, you, you, you build that foundation and then everything else that gets built on it just naturally gets risen up right? Which is the same concept we need to apply to the world, right? Instead of this trickle down crap, right? <laughs> you build up the foundation. You start at the bottom, like who's suffering the worst, right? We start there and then you build up just like a tree. A tree grows up from the ground. And if it isn't growing, we don't mess with the tree. We change the environment and give it space and love and let it grow, <laughs> right? We fix the we fix the foundational bottom problem so that it can go up. And then as that as the bottom raises up, everybody goes up. So we're getting way off topic. Let's go back to talking about squats. Uh, about hip width, fifty percent, toe in, toe out. Uh, which I know this is going to extend it just a smidge. I have a tendency to long, be long winded. Please know if I'm ever uh, we're going on and I'm talking about something. If you're in chat, obviously let me know. Say so, so, hey dummy get back on target but uh i have a tendency to want to over explain because i'm eager to help and i you know we make all these connections and i want to help every way that i can uh the whole objective of this stream is to be helpful and beneficial and provide you with free information on how you can take care of your body and all of the things that you may or may not be currently experiencing that are coming from that neglect that you're just completely unaware of. And as soon as we start clearing a few of these things up and showing you how easy and convenient it is to work these things into your life, you start feeling better and being better and then everything's just better, right? So we're gonna squat, smack, smack, smack. We're doing, looking for that. You just kinda, if you get stuck, right? If we get stuck, just kinda slow down for a second. Pause, sit there, wiggle, move around, try to get a little lower little lower and then keep going. But the objective here is trying, I know you're kind of getting like a down angle at me, so it looks weird, but you're trying to get yourself down into a bottom position, not where you're completely bottomed out, where you're, you know, your, your butt's curling under, we're doing this, 
right? That's your back turned off. Like this isn't this, if this is the best you can do and we can spend time down here, this is okay. Um, but you want to try to keep yourself extended, right? So try to keep your bucket of water upright. Try to keep your glutes turned on. And we're seeking out where that smack was between the calves and the back of the leg while we're doing all that and keeping our butt extended. So I'm gonna squat as low as I can, keeping the extension, and then squeeze the butt and drive to the top, right? If you can't do that, then this is what we're here to talk about. If you can do that, great. These things will also help you. You'll be able to use them to improve your current situation and get even better, right? Uh, today, specifically, we're not going to discuss um, active stretches, per se, as much as we're going to address the root of the problem, if you're kind of seeing this theme, this pattern that's, that, we're, that we're hitting here. As above, so below, as they say, everything's connected, and as you can see, with how uh, beautifully we've kind of traversed a wide range of things so far, and they're all connected, right? So we're going to start with the root of the problem. Why do I or do I not have the ability to do what we just tested, right? And then we're going to talk about how we can change that pattern to produce a different result. We're going to do that by providing a different stimulus to the body, which is going to provoke a different change, right? Pretty simple, I know. Uh, but the first one is plopping, okay? You've been doing this for a long, long time. And I don't blame you for it. I was in that trap. I was a plopper too, okay? And I, you know, once in a while, I enjoy myself a pretty good plop, you know? Uh, but if you don't know what I'm talking about, this is what it is. When you, when you walk up to that chair and you go to sit down and then like you get to a certain point, you just bail out. You're just like, eh, uh, and then you go, right? It looks like this. And you can do uh, different variations. Like you can be smaller. But you can see as I'm getting there, like there's a point where you just kind of, whew, and then you coast your ass to the couch or whatever it is you're sitting on, right? And then after we get there, usually we're sitting like this, right? Which is even worse than the way we were just sitting at the computer, working or being in school or whatever. I mean, like if you live in America, right? Uh, I'm, I'm not gonna say this is how the whole world does it, but you know, uh, in America, our entire system is predicated on sitting, right? Like K through 12, come here, sit down, be quiet, memorize this, because we're gonna test you on it once in a while and see if you have memorized it as well as we'd like. And if you haven't been memorizing this con construct the way I like it, then well, we'll hold you back and make sure that you really do get it memorized before we let you move forward, right? And if you are memorizing it really well, well then let's accelerate your process, yeah? But you sit in a desk all day to graduate and then go to college for another four years to sit at a desk all day to get a job in the career sitting in a desk all day right and that's 40 years from now that's a plan i've got to pay off all this debt that i've incurred now from all the sitting i've done so now darn it i have to sit some more 40 more years of sitting so that i can retire and go sit on, go sit on a beach you couldn't see me right there, but I did that, that super slouchy chair lunch, right? You see what's happening here? 
So here's conceptually what you need to understand about sitting and why it's bad for you, okay? Obviously, if you did this, the test in the beginning, you're aware. Holy mother F, I can't do that. And you, honestly, I really hope that <laughs> you have someone available or you can just do this yourself, like record it and watch it. Your, like see yourself not able to do what I just did on screen. Because you should, you should be able to. Not only should you be able to do that, you used to be able to do that. Your life, the way you live it, has removed that capability from your tool set. Now you can't do it at all. And if you keep continuing down this path, it's going to get worse. And frankly, I would not be surprised if some of you are also already suffering from some kind of chronic condition, largely sciatica or some other low back kind of pain. And if it's not one of those, it's probably your knee. Now, if I, out of those three, touched a nerve on you, then today's stream is going to save your life. Okay? So when you sit like that, you lose the ability to activate your glute muscle, which is the primary armor that protects your lower back, okay? The way we typically do that is through what's called external rotation. And we've done this in some other streams, internal rotations, rotation toward the midline or the inner part of the body. External rotation is rotation toward the outside of the body, right? Depending on which side you're, we're talking about. The way your shoulder and hips both work is that they're kind of working with some softer tissues that need to be wound up to create, the, through this tension, it creates this stabilizing effect as it generates torque through twisting itself and it stabilizes an otherwise fairly loose and maneuverable capsule because we have all this crazy, you know, range of motion with those joints. If you don't know how to externally rotate those sockets and generate the proper stabilization, you are going to incur injuries. It might not happen immediately. It's something that happens over time. And that's, this is why when, when people like, you know, you hear about somebody who slipped a disc or something stupid, right? Which when I hear that, I'm like, oh, you sit too much. You got weak, you got a weak ass and you got no booty in the pants, right? Like no butt, no hamstrings. There's nothing back there. You're just, right? Probably, and if not, you're probably like, fat and saggy <laughs> it's a combination of both but you know you haven't been acting and it's not I'm not blaming you no one's ever taught you and it's a freaking shame like why are we not teaching children like first and foremost here's how you take care of and maintain your physical vessel that's going to carry you through this journey it's a long process it's actually pretty short but it's long you know and there's things you got to do. There's some body maintenance that's got to happen <laughs> to keep it running at optimum efficiency. You know, you wouldn't drive your car without ever changing the oil or checking the brake fluid or changing the rotators and the pads or refilling the washer fluid or the transmission fluid or the, or the, or the tires. You know, like all these things that go with maintaining a vehicle, they, these things apply to everything. Houses have, a, you know, Everything has ongoing maintenance. It's in a constant state of degradation, as is your body. And if you quantify that process by adding load and speed, you will drastically reduce how many cycles you're going to get before the break. This is why it's so important to have a good coach or a good teacher who can teach you what those proper archetypes are, those proper patterns are, what muscles should be doing the work 
which ones should be doing the stabilizing, and how exactly do you achieve that by providing you with good cues that you can implement to ensure that you're moving as efficiently as possible, to maximize your gains, maximize your progress, maximize your results, and diminish and remove potential of injury and potential of wasting your time doing something that's not <laughs> getting it done fast enough, right? So uh, that's the first thing. Um, from there, oh boy, I'm having, a, I'm having a brain fart. Someone here to get me back on track? I got sidetracked there. So we were talking about doo -doo -doo, squatting, what kinds of plopping. Uh, we did the squat. We noticed we didn't have the range of motion. Career of sitting down through our ed is the education that sidetracked me. That's what it was. So we were talking about different variations of sitting down. I forget. I had some points I was going to do with the fingers. If those come back, then I'll list them. But uh, when we're sitting down, we need to make some changes. First and foremost, you need to think about uh, creating a bridge from your hip to the top of your spine. Okay. And we do that by kind of like scooting our butt all the way back against the chair and then trying to create that, that bridge effect. That's why, you know, they sell those like lower lumbar uh, devices for, for cars and their chairs that have lumbar supports or whatever. It's trying to assist you with maintaining that extension uh, so that you can keep good spinal positioning. But kind of what we were just talking about is that if you don't have the ability to externally rotate that capsule, you're not really able to create that stability because you're stuck in this position of flexion, right? So basically it's this. Uh, when, you're, when, you're in, when your hip's in that position of flexion, right, or like this, yeah, that turns off your... When they're both like that, it turns off your butt's ability to, to turn itself on and kind of help out with uh, stabilizing your, your, your back and helping you sit up straight, right? Um, so then that, it defaults that load and that work over to your psoas, which is connected into the hip flexors or whatever. So then your hips and your psoas get super wound up and super tight that you're stuck in this position and it starts pulling you forward, right? Pulling, it's kind of crunching you down like this, which then makes it even harder for you to try to try to stand your body up, right? Because you have this this tension here that's just pulling you down, right? Making it even more difficult. You now have resistance, and then the longer you spend time being pulled into this position, these other things are going to start happening, and it's just going to cascade downhill from there, right? So. How do we get it? Like, what do we do if we have to sit? I mean, first and foremost, we need to ratify all this stuff. Standing desks. Why are these kids sitting down all day? Why are we forcing students to sit the entire time? Workers to sit. Find ways that let them stand. <laughs> let them stand and walk around. Sitting's for break time, right? We can stand and learn. We can stand and work. We can stand. We can stand. We can stand. We can walk. We can move. We used to do that for a long time before the current construct was upon us, right? So stand, but if we have to sit, we have options. A, we can sit on the ground. That's a good alternative. It, in, in most cases, is self-regulating because you will, it'll force you to like, you, you'll know it. Like when you sit down, you'll, you'll sit one way and then you'll rotate the other way. And then you'll rotate back like this. You know, like I'll do stuff like this, right? This is it. Like for people that are really tight, they like this one because it's easy. But you might do this. You might bring a leg in. You might do this one, right? And if you have yourself a, a little stand or something, right, we can sit here and do work, right? And then you just kind of rotate around, bring this leg in, we're sitting here, we're working, bing, 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 bing. Maybe we're trying to do both legs here, boom, 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 boom right? But it's kind of self-regulating. Your body will kind of, uh, kind of let you know when to move. Like you kind of like, oh, I'm kind of getting, I'm getting, ooh, I'm tinglier. You know, you'll just kind of. 
So it forces you to move versus when you sit in that static position, you're just kind of like, you know, um, getting absorbed into that position. I just imagine people like sinking into the couch, like those commercials they used to show with people, they get all deflated or whatever. And they like, like melt into the chair. That's pretty much what you're doing right now. If that's the only option you have and there's no way around it, you have to sit like that. First and foremost, there's this. Okay. There are a few archetypes that we need to try to maintain. Um, and then there's some better alternatives if you have some control over the, that situ this situation, okay? So first and foremost, we have this, right? Uh, we're looking for 90 degrees, okay? Basically what we want is we want, we want to see a 90 degree from, I don't know how far I need to be. I had made some adjustments. How far can you go? Uh, hold on, let's try this. Oh, hey, all right. Got another, like another inch, maybe. Maybe. So we're looking for 90s, right? I want to see a 90 degree here, right? I want to see that my butt, and you can see I got a lumbar support here, right? You push your butt all the way back and imagine make it like a big arch, right? Big arch and then come back, boom, something like that. And then that's where that pad goes, goes in the arch. The thing you have to be cautious of, and I've seen this happen, it's a crying shame. If this pad slides down, okay, right? If it goes all the way to the bottom and my butt is hitting that and it pushes me into that like, scooped under position that just wreaks havoc on your spinal cord and everything else in your body okay your jam that's like a big traffic jam lanes are shut down you know what i mean the exits closed off it's freaking maddening right get that thing up you gotta get your butt to the seat that goes in like the middle of your back just below your scapulas to help you create the arch which this is uh, for bench pressers, this is your bench press position, right? Uh, so then we're here, right? I got my 90, I got my arch, okay? Then I'm going to have another 90 here, okay? And your screen then has to be eye level, okay? Wherever your eyes go, your head's going to go, and wherever your head goes, your body's going to follow. Right? If you're a motorcycle rider, you know what I'm talking about. A lot of people make this mistake, like mountain bikers or whatever. People make this mistake where like, uh, even like if you're driving or running, uh, it's not too carried away. If, if you look at the thing, the danger, whatever it is that might potentially cause you harm, the pothole, the object, the thing that you don't want to hit, if you look at that, you're probably going to hit it, right? Like, you instead, you look where you want to go. You look where you want to go and you go there, right? Because the eyes, where the eyes go, the head goes, and where the head goes, the body follows, okay? 90, 90, eye level, arch. That's the checklist. Now, if you have the ability like if you're so it, this that's the checklist if you have a chair that's got arms on it and you're too big to do what I'm about to show you but if you have the ability I remove the arms from my chair so that I can do this you can do one leg at a time you bring it up to the to the seat just like this and I kind of push this and you like you'll feel yourself kind of binding up in this hip you kind of just drive and wiggle that knee down. And then I kind of put my hands back here and give, use my down foot. And I'm gonna pick myself up and kind of wiggle and scoot that butt back a little, reestablish my arch. And I could already feel strength here because now I have at least one externally rotated hip, okay? And then all I do is I let it self-regulate. 
in 15 to 20 minutes for me. Like, right, and I'm actually getting a huge stretch just sitting, just sitting here and getting the stretch. I can feel it over here, right? It's great getting paid to get a stretch, right? If you're super awesome and you got a lacrosse ball like we've talked about, which these things bonus, wonderful, wonderful tools. So versatile. You can take them all over the place. Um, you can have this on the floor, rolling your foot out. So I'm stretching this. Rolling the arch on that one. Making money. Why not? Right? Same thing if you're standing up. Okay? Um, and there's a, a bonus at the end. Maybe we'll talk about a few other things. Uh, so get your hip up. Every 15 minutes, 20 minutes, if you need a time, a timer, switch. Right? Um, be, be realistic. Pay attention to your body. Nobody knows your body better than you. Right? Uh, if it's tingling and numb or, you know, whatever, stop, <laughs> change position, abort, danger Will Robinson, right? Don't sit there and destroy yourself. That's ridiculous, okay? Uh, but so you're just doing that, right? And then we can swap it out, bring the other one up. I had to, again, remove the arms of my chair. Not all of you are going to have that option, right? Uh, but that's what you're aiming to do. Externally rotate, reestablish that arch, lift yourself up, and then make sure that you've made the adjustments necessary to maintain eye level, maintain your 90s, okay? So let's say my chair doesn't adjust. What do I do? My chair doesn't adjust. It's my feet are hanging, you know? Stack something up. Stack, stack up some books, right? Um, maybe... Uh, you got to use your, your, maybe if you want to try to do a standing something, you know, standing with this 90, right? And then uh, you, what you'd want to do is just like at a bar, you know, at a bar, they got that little, uh, that gold bar that runs down along the floor, right? Uh, at the base of the bar. That's there for a reason. It's for you to put one foot up on so that we can basically kind of achieve a similar effect while standing and kind of get the butt, uh, g g give us the ability to create some torque and stabilize the hip structure, which then supports the spine, right? Uh, which is, you know, how those people got injured. Their sciatica and all that other crap manifested because they were plopping their whole freaking life, and they were sitting like a, you know what, not externally rotating. Then slowly but surely, it's always that. They always, oh, yeah, I don't, I don't deadlift anymore because one time I deadlifted, and boom, my back blowed up, right? Or I bent over and picked up a, a feather and boom, my back blowed up, right? It wasn't that you picked up a feather. It wasn't that you deadlifted. It was that your shitty technique <laughs> over years and years and years and time and reps just accumulated and then finally you broke because you were doing it wrong and you weren't taking care of your body, doing the body maintenance to fix it or keep it going, right? You could have gone longer doing it wrong if you've done some of the things i'd tell you you know or that we discuss here right if you do some of that maintenance you'll be able to improperly lift for even longer so that's a bonus right like it's a win-win <laughs> whether you want to get better at lifting or not you can at least not lift well for longer if you do some of these things right so um, they're all interrelated sciatica and those blown out backs and stuff it's a it's a why is it a chronic problem in america well, we don't squat primarily, which is what we're going to get to at the end of this. And our whole world in life is set up and revolves around sitting. As I described to you, and you wanted me to, want me to really put it in perspective, what do you do when you get out of work? What do you do when you're done with school? What do you do after you just got done doing all that damn sitting? You go watch Netflix. Or you play a video game and you sit more. Do you see? This is the problem. We have to address the source. Stand. We have to seek to stand. If we're not going to, we don't have the ability to do that, then we have to sit properly. Ideally, it's cross legged, right? Find a way to sit cross legged on the floor or up in your chair. This allows me to get uh, external rotation in my, in my, and stabilize my hip structure. 
so that I can sit up properly when I'm, when I'm working. I can still get my 90s. Um, you know, if, uh, for example, let's say you have a laptop, maybe I'm, I'm able to do something like this, but like, hey, I got my laptop, I got my 90, but my laptop screen's down here. So then I go like this, right? Uh, for individuals like you, you kind of got like two options. Either, op either you're uh, doing a, like an HDMI out to an alternate TV that is eye level, and then you're using laptop as a keyboard, or you're stacking laptop on books to use as your primary monitor and getting that to eye level and then investing in either a USB or a Bluetooth keyboard and mouse or whatever so that you can keep that at a 90 and then use the laptop as a screen. That's going to get it up and let you sit up straight. But these are the corrections we have to make. Okay, um, this is how we... Uh, with regard to sitting, are going to address that, that problem and diminish these reoccurring conditions. As a society, we need to have a serious discussion about the way we're doing things, right? Like, people need to stand up. Like, we, like for kids, K-12, through mandatory. Federally regulated if it has to be. Like, let's reallocate some of this money we put into developing nuclear bombs and crap that nobody wants and shift like half a percent <laughs> since we spend gazillions of dollars doing that. It's like 1% of that and uh, buy standing desks for everybody, right? I mean, not right now we're transitioning into virtual. So a lot of this stuff's going to be done um, through streams and, you know, teaching formats like this. A lot of kids as we know it aren't going back to school. Let's uh, prepare ourselves for that. If you're a parent, get ready. If you're a teacher, get ready. As a teacher, your career is changing. This is the new thing, okay? You're going to have to be able to uh, have a professional setup so you can stream to people and provide uh, high-quality audio, high-quality video. Um, kids are going to have to have access to some type of... Uh, internet receiving streaming device phone computer tablet right everyone's gonna have to have one uh i we might even see a transition into like i know in america we had computer lab growing up but you know they teach you how to type and stuff um that's because probably gonna that's gonna be the schools right you'll have some type of remote computer lab center with um professional like some type of adult there to supervise and we're not just letting people from the public in here like this is for k through 12ers kids to come here and virtually connect whilst uh whilst is it whilst 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 i don't know which one is it uh while being monitored by an adult and we're not like letting other adults that shouldn't be in there with these children be in there right like I'm assuming we're smart enough to kind of cover those bases. But the idea is basically going to be this computer lab where these kids are just going to go there. It's going to be like college more so than it is structured schooling today, maybe. Like, I might only have to go there for a couple hours and then I got to go back in the afternoon whenever my teacher's streaming the class. And once things get rocking and rolling, we'll have databases recorded and saved up and this won't be a problem, right? And we could probably get ahead of that by pre-recording a lot of stuff. But this is the transition that's happening, right? And we can be ahead of that curve by coming out in front of it and saying, standing desk, all of it's standing, period. We don't need to sit. They can stand, right? And let's, just, let's talk about how to, how to stand properly, how to squat properly, how to lift properly, how to maximize the effort, diminish injury. Why aren't we being taught that too? Kids need to learn how to, all humans should learn how their body works and the best way to maintain it. For them because everybody's different you know your body better than anybody but if you're not being provided all the information so that you can then assess and decide with my body and my situation this is the best method for me you never know what it is or what it feels like what it looks like you have no clue 
We're not teaching people that, which is super important because you only get one body. And then the alternative is, well, let's try putting this pill in your mouth. And uh, we'll see what happens. And if it, that doesn't work, we'll try some other pills. And if they don't work, um, cut you open. And we'll swap your body parts out for a foreign object. How's that sound? Like that's our option? How about you? we teach every human how to maintain their vehicle back at the start line before they even start the race? Like, hey, before you take off, there's a few things you need to know. Tire pressure, oil, you know, like go through the list of like, here's how you take care of your body. Here are the things you need to consume so your joints function properly. Here's, how, you know, ding, 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 right? The five pillars of fitness, exercise, nutrition, sleep, uh, <laughs> mobility, recovery, stretching, right? And depending on how much exercise or how much you demand from your body, nutrition, water, sleep, mobilizing, stretching, that stuff, those other four are all regulated by the one. The more I demand, the more I sit, the more I this, the more I that, 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 the more water, the more nutrition, the more sleep the more mobility stretch, right? All of those things go up. The solution isn't, oh, I'm not seeing results. I've, I'm doing this. I'm not seeing results. Exercising. I guess I'll do more. I'll do it harder. I'll do it faster. Wrong. Without the other four, you're just driving your, your body maintenance tab through the roof. Now you're in debt to your body right? You didn't stay ahead of the payment. You fell behind the payment. You understand? You're in default. You got to catch up to where you were before you lost it and then try to keep maintaining it from there. So now we're going to put and that's going to be done not through more, faster, heavier, which is just going to result in injury, diminished results, diminished returns. It's actually by increasing nutrition, water, sleep, ability stretch, body maintenance. These are the things you have to do. We can negate that if we pressure for the standing desks. We are, we are transitioning, transitioning into a new phase as we know it, especially here in America. I know, it's, I know in America things are changing. It's not going to go back to the way we used to know it. And that's okay. We just got to know what that looks like and be prepared to, to, to make that shift and do it in a healthy way. We have an opportunity to make some positive changes as this transition occurs and get our entire society standing up, right? We can start teaching children the basics of the five pillars you know, of, of physical fitness and we can also talk to them about mental health instability. How do you manage your own personal happiness? How do you deal with the gamut of emotions you're going to experience through this journey? How do you deal with hardship, sadness, depression, loneliness? What's the difference between being alone and being lonely? Do you know? Has anyone ever talked to you about this? What do you do when you're mad? What's acceptable? What are you allowed to do? Is that okay? Is anyone else getting hurt? Is it hurting you? Is it hurt anything else? Who taught you how to do that? Oh, well, it's the parent's job. Well, not all of us got parents, dude, right? Some of us are kind of stumbling through this existence without that guidance. Some of us might be fortunate enough to have one. Some of us are in an area where all we see is death, corruption, crime, drugs, filth, murder, atrocities against other human beings, neglect, rarely see love in abundance. 
And then we expect these people to function a way, a certain way. Like, what would you, that's, it is what it is, right? So we, ha we have an opportunity here. We have an opportunity to make a positive change. It's going to affect everything. We can change it in the schools as we shift to this computer streaming, whatever, like if it ends up being that satellite concept or they're just, you know, who knows, staying at home. Who knows if that's a, if that's a possibility. I imagine we're going to have to provide something publicly, right? Not all children are going to have phones and computers and tablets. So we're going to have to figure out a way to let other kids continue to learn. Uh, and we need to make that transition in the standing and then, and then we need to aggressively pursue reforming the workplace for those individuals who are not going to be able to stay home, the individuals who do not have the p ability to control the type of setup they have, it's being provided to me by my employer, right? We need to put some guidelines in. Why? Well, health conditions, bro. Look at the freaking history of this stuff. It's all about the same time as we transition into the shoes, like right around the time, I think it was uh, 70s, right? 70s is when uh, like rubber sold shoes kind of became a thing. And immediately as we started building these concrete jungles, we jacked up the heel, which in some athletic environments is advantageous, like weightlifting. We'll talk about that. But they put this super elevated heel in the shoe. Why? Well, because most people are sitting too long, too much now and they don't have full range of motion in their hip, their knees or their ankles. And they have weak arches because they add these cushions to it. They're like big pillows on your feet, right? So you're just gushing into this stuff as you're plopping around, which then allows you to walk like a Neanderthal clob hopping your feet down like a horse trotting down you know just destroying your body destroying your feet and then never giving them any tlc like hey i know i was a jerk to you today but hey here's a donut you know like nothing you're not doing anything for your body right especially not your feet or your calves Jeez, most people they don't even know that stuff exists right uh, if you were to look at me and see my little chicken legs, you'd think I didn't know any better either, but <laughs> I can assure you I'm working on it. Right. As should you be right. Uh, so there are definitely cons from plopping and sitting incorrectly in the wear and tear that's going to provide to your body. We do have options to sit on the floor. We have options when we sit in a desk, we have options, obviously when we're standing, um, as we transition out of the chair, we start to use the shoes. And as we were just talking about, you know, once they became rubber sold and the, and the heels got jacked up, uh, some bad things started to occur. Now, what does that mean to you? So basically it's the, the point of elevating the heel is that it diminishes the necessary range of motion for the ankle so that the knee can get in a proper position when trying to perform a full depth squat in an Olympic weightlifting setting or weightlifting to the rest of the world. In America, we call it Olympic weightlifting. The rest of the world calls it weightlifting because it's what it is. It's literally the most efficient way for a human being to pick an external load up from the floor and put it in an overhead position in either one move or for heavier loads, two moves, floor to overhead, all humans. Weightlifting. We call it Olympic weightlifting here in America, but we have these shoes and they're called lifters. For example, this is a lifter. Oh, um, yes, this is a Nike. I purchased this before certain things happened. I no longer support this company and I don't suggest their products to people necessarily, but I will say this. I have very wide feet and one of the big issues in the shoe industry outside of elevated heels and too much cushion is that the toe box in these shoes in most shoes is too narrow for human feet which is why a lot of us are getting crunched up and getting bunions and all these weird 
Eagle Talon feats because they're forcing us to put our feet into shoes that are not designed for humans properly, okay? We need to regulate and force this shoe industry and or completely refuse to buy products from anyone who does not pursue this compliance on their own, a wider toe box shoe. Just like we would regulate an emissions something on a car because health and global problems, we need to regulate these shoes. They are killing people and giving them chronic conditions because they're not able to articulate a proper contact to the ground. Your feet are like the roots of a tree. You need to have a firm contact with the ground for many reasons. If we're talking about your electrical body, there's an exchange of electrons occurring there, positive and electro and negative, just like you would see between, uh, I believe it's the, the stratosphere, right? And Earth, when you see a lightning storm, there's an accumulation of positive ions and then the discharge happens. Planet Earth, Mother Earth balances it out. We, in turn, also are electric beings and we balance ourselves out through the earth. So part of the problem, rubber soles. You just insulated us. Rubber is not condu electrically conducive. We can no longer ground ourselves. That's what we're talking about here, grounding ourselves, literally, with the planet, which is how we were born into this world, barefoot, walking on dirt, the earth. We built concrete paths. We designed and produced rubber-soled shoes, electrically insulated shoes. Those two things in combination cut our ability off to ground, to exchange positive and negative in balance, okay? Now, I'm not going to get off into what the variations of those things look like, but it's something that we need in our body. Uh, for example, like, you have a hard time sleeping through the night, you need to go ground, right? You, uh, are you someone who uh, very angry all the time, mad, you got like anger, a lot of anger spites? One of your healing modalities is going to be grounding. Yeah? Uh, so there's a bunch of stuff there that we can get into for the electric body. But for the physical body, we need that exchange. Rubber is not electrically conducive. Boom, that happened in the 70s. Uh, we also have been building this concrete jungle, jungle, which is partly why they put the big cushions on the shoes. Because we got lazy from sitting too much from all the education, K through 12, college, now we're in our career, still sitting after decades of sitting, right? We now have restricted hip, knee, and ankle range of motion. So they've elevated our heel, which then shortens our Achilles tendon. And if you've seen any of the studies that have happened to our soldiers, who have just destroyed Achilles attendance from all the running and the marching and stuff that happens in those boots. The evidence is there. It's not good for you. And then it translates up. This is where sciatica comes from. This is where all the low back injuries come from. Right? How do I know that? Because you can't externally rotate your hip while you're in a standing position or a seating position. How do you do it when you're standing? With your feet. Open your toes up, big toe splay, grab the ground, twist and externally rotate to the outside of the body. That torque from your foot, from the ground all the way up your leg to your hip, creates that external rotation, stabilizes the hip, and stabilizes and protects the low back. You cannot do that with narrow toe box shoes. It compresses your toe splay. You can't toe splay at all. Now you're forced to... Con uh, to not toe splay and, and create force, which then I can't stabilize the arch of my foot. So then my foot starts to flatten out and then I toe way out to compensate so that my ankle can collapse in, which then dives my knee in and dives my hip in. And then I'm in this valgus knee fault, which I'm not going to go down that road of like, oh, valgus knee fault. Like it's not inherently dangerous. I'll say that. It's not inherently dangerous, but it's not the most efficient way to do things, and it could, it, it's putting you in a position where you could get very injured. So we, there are ways that we would try to 
correct that and promote a healthier, more efficient, more effective motor pattern. Okay. Uh, inherently though, it's not going to necessarily just kill you, right? Uh, it's, it's other things that are going to happen. Something, someone hitting you in that position or you trying to create uh, an aggressive change of directions while in that position, that's going to jack you up. So, um, as a byproduct of the concrete, the cushions came in to help absorb it, which then allowed us to kind of plop when we walked, right? So we started walking like this, where we just kind of bat, 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 bat. And then we all started to notice we're getting a little soft. So we're like, strap on your tennis shoes and go for a run. That's the American way. Which, by the way, if your objective is to lose body fat, if you are like, I'm fat, Disregard this. I'm overweight. I want to lose weight. Weight means jack when we're talking about your health. Okay. Your body weight. I don't care about that number. I don't. Muscle weighs more than fat. A lot of times the goals that you want are going to require you to gain weight. And I assure you, you will love the new version of you, even though you're heavier. Right? So weight is meaningless. Detach yourself from that number. Overweight, ugh. what we're concerned about is body fat percentage, nothing else. And most people, when they strap on their Nikes and go for a run, are interested in losing fat. They want to get rid of their fat. That's the main reason they're on the run. And guess what long distance aerobic style training what that stimulus is to your body, right? It says, hey, we need to maintain this low power output for a long period of time. You know what's going to make that easier? Is if we weighed less. So uh, what's the heaviest thing in here? The muscle? Let's get rid of that. And don't let any more come in. We don't want any of that. What else do we need? Well, it's a long trip. We're going to need some stores, some uh, resources for the journey. Well, we better store some energy then. You know what stored energy is in the human body? It's fat. So if your objective is to not be fat or to burn fat, don't go running. <laughs> don't go running. Don't go riding your bike. Don't go long distance swimming. Don't do uh, like long distance rowing. All those long distance endurance sports are going to make you, that you might make you, it might make you thin, but you'll be what's called skinny fat. You'll be thin and squishy. You won't have muscle. So it's up to you. Like if that's the body you want, then yeah, go do it. Of course. Um, I would never discourage someone from doing any of those things. Like if it's do that or nothing, hell yeah, dude, go ride your bike or whatever it is you want to, you know, there are ways that we can modify those aerobic workouts and make them into a more anaerobic workout. And the beauty of that is that we can increase our anaerobic capacity, which will increase the aerobic capacity. It doesn't go the other way. You can't run long distance and then get good at sprinting. But you can sprint and see improvements in your long distance. Okay? So, and by making this transition, it's a different style of training. It's a different stimulus to the body. And it's going to provoke a different result, a different change right? And a different adaptation, which is what we do as humans. We adapt. So with that plopping in the, in the cushion of the shoes, because of the concrete, it translated into our running. And now we have really crappy run mechanics because again, nobody taught us how nobody taught you who took you aside and was like, Hey, do you know how to walk properly? Do you not know run? properly? You had to sprint properly? Let me show you. And yet we do those things, all of us, maybe not as frequently as we used to, some more so than others, but we do a lot of stuff on a day-to-day -day basis that is, is learning, knowing how to do those well and why is very important. So let's talk about it. Uh, first and foremost, we need to see, seek out different shoes. Okay. If you're a lifter, these are great. There's a reason why we use these. Obviously, we're elevating the knee, the, the heel so that we can achieve a further uh, 
we can achieve moving the, the, the knee further out over the toes uh, by reducing the, the need, the necessary range of motion of the ankle. So if you have crappy range of motion, these are gonna make you feel like a freaking G, right? You're gonna put these on and be like, oh man, I'm doing such an amazing lifter now. I would encourage you to get good at all these lifts barefoot. Barefoot is how you're designed to operate. And then you put these babies on to enhance, okay? Uh, specifically for weightlifters though, there is plywood in here and it runs up to a certain point of the foot. And part of that is so that when we get that, that clap, there's an audible or there's a, a, a response with the central nervous system that kind of stimulates everything, fires it all up and allows us to quickly restabilize uh, in our bottom position before the load hits us um, as we transition under these bars. Uh, so there's kind of a, there's a couple things happening here. Uh, but um, the main reason I bought these ones is because they have the widest toe box in a weightlifting shoe that I was able to find at the time I made this purchase, which was two years ago, three years ago maybe. Um, I had a, uh, another pair prior to this. I loved them as far as toe boxes were concerned. They were the only ones I could find that I could get anything remotely close to a toe splay in. And these are still way too small, to be clear. Um, these are no longer being made. They're, uh, these are the Nike Romaleos 2. Uh, they have changed the design. It's slightly different now. You can check the measurements and see. I am a fan of the two-strap system. So I haven't tried any of the newest version. If you like these uh, and they're unavailable, the other, the other, the, the next best thing is Anta, the Antas, A-N-T-A from China. It's my understanding that basically um, there was a deal that went sour. These were going to get produced over there and they didn't work it out. And China was like, well, we'll just tweak it a little bit and then we'll call it something else and sell it. <laughs> uh, so I think it's uh, like like two, I don't remember exactly, so don't quote me on this, but like two millimeter, two uh, centimeters smaller here. So just slightly smaller, but it's still uh, uh, at that time, two or three years ago, it was the second biggest option. I haven't really checked recently, so uh, look for yourself. Lifters, right? That's for exercise. As far as, um, as, far as shoes go, you basically want to look for, like, think like uh, Converse or Tom's, how it's like that flat, like nothing, right? Uh, which, which for those of you that are flat-footed, um, there's a whole slew of awesome things that we can do to strengthen. I think I've talked about that in some previous episodes. If I have it, um, let me know. Uh, I can make a personal, personalized video for that, and we can, we can get that squared away. Um, but seek out basically no heel, no cushion. Think about like your objective is to be barefoot on the ground, ideally. Obviously in the city, you can't necessarily do that, nor would you want to. It's disgusting and you could cut yourself and Corona, you know, you don't want that. So um, there are a couple of companies out there that I recently have moved to. I've tried a lot of cheap alternatives um, so I'm just not going to suggest them to you is kind of what's going to happen. Um, I always keep a pair of Vibram style skellies and these actually got the toes that go in them. Um, my advice for these, if you are one of those people that get stink feet, like you get stinky feet, your shoes are just disgusting. First and foremost, you need to start wearing wool socks. That'll fix your problem, okay? Uh, wool, or at least a blend of wool that's primarily wool. Avoid cotton, like the plague, polyester. Avoid it. Get yourself wool socks. I know it sounds weird. I Even in like it's 90 degrees out, I'm wearing wool socks. And my feet may or may not, but it wool will whisk the moisture away, and you will see a drastic reduction in your stinkiness. Outside of that, you make that transition. We get wool socks, which... Um, for these, I wasn't able to get wool socks. I honestly I haven't looked. Um, I went through a bunch of toe, different toe socks that were, uh, I tried wearing them barefoot and they would get disgusting, right? Um, a different bunch of different toe socks. What I ended up picking up was some of these Injis. Uh, I think it's I-N-J-I. They're kind of, they're expensive. 
but damn it, they're good. Uh, a lot of these other ones, like a couple times through the wash, they're crap. They're ripping. They're like, you're, you know, I've had these ones, these NGs I bought. I think I got uh, like four pairs, maybe, maybe five. Um, as I kind of like, I started buying like one pair of time, you know, and at this point I like four or five now. Um, there's st- my first pair still alive. So, uh, NG, it might be E N J I. I think they're on Amazon, but they're, I would get socks for these. Otherwise they're going to stink like a mofo. If you're a sweaty, st- stinky foot person, or you know someone who is wool socks is the solution. The other thing you can do is, uh, go to like Costco or Sam's club or wherever your big bulk market is and get yourself antibacterial bars of soap. And then I would just kind of like, I would chop them up, take one bar of soap and like chop it into four pieces or something. Right. Or like four pieces and then in half. So you have eight pieces and I just toss one in each pair, each one of my shoes, right? Wool socks, come home, take them off, slap one of those, you know, throw my bar of soap. And then when I'm leaving, I'll pull it out and just kind of leave it there and take off. Uh, or however you got to do that. If you got animals, protect your animals. Right. But, uh, you can throw antibacterial in there and that'll help kind of get it down too. Right. Um, so Vibram, 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 zero drop. Uh, the, um, these are the jargons you search for when you're looking for your shoes, right? Um, Vibram, zero drop. Uh, what else do they call it? Uh, there's another, there's another word, word, foot shoes, foot, barefoot, barefoot, barefoot something. Um, the companies I'm, I'm, I'm loving right now, and they're a little pricey, but you get what you pay for. Um, I have some Vivo barefoot shoes. These are, I think the stealth, stealth threes or something. Uh, but again, like all my shoes are, you know, they're just flat with rubber. Okay. Uh, and, and limbs is the other company. L E M S. Both very good companies. They are a little pricey, but you know, like for example, my uh, my Vivos, that's all recycled material, right? So I mean, that's another beautiful thing about some of these companies that are making the effort to produce shoes that have a wide enough toe box for your f- foot to fit into and still look nice, and not have crazy arches and crazy heels and all the stuff that hurts you and destroys your body, right? It's just a, you know, I could curl this baby up, right? This thing is waterproof, right? It's waterproof. It's, uh, it's leather. It's a hiking boot. And it looks nice, right? Pay a little money. Uh, a lot of these companies, again, are using recycled materials. Uh, they're producing shoes that are designed for you and your foot. So either we need to regulate that or we need to just, as a consumer kind of band together and, uh, you know, start boycotting these companies that aren't making the effort to produce shoes that take care of us. But personally, I'm looking at it like, just like the auto industry. Like we knew this was causing harm. This is a harmful thing. We have to regulate it. There's now emissions tests and there's, you know, this is a harmful thing. Sitting is harmful. Bad shoes is harmful. Not connecting to nature and grounding properly is harmful. So we got to make better choices, pursue better options when we get our footwear, pursue um, walking better, right? So that's the next component. Uh, we talked about how like we get this habit of like plopping, right? And again, what that comes from is this, right? sitting there watching TV, right? Uh, we then end up trying to walk like that, essentially, right? Um, we're kind of hunched over. And in order for us to get our heads in a good position, right? Because like neutral spine would be this, right? i in neutral spine. But because I've been sitting all day, this is happening. My core is super weak because I just sit all the time, right? In order for me to get my upper body in the appropriate position to have a neutral spine, I have to excessively arch my back and then I end up kind of like 
doing this thing. So what people will do is they'll, they'll kind of scoop their hips underneath. See how that, that change that just happened? How it just kind of like stacks me up. And then they'll kind of walk like that. You've seen these people because they'll kind of do this too. You'll see them from the front. Their feet will be out like this. It's those, and they'll like, usually, usually they'll scuff, they scuff their heels. They're those, they're those people, right? So you see them like this. So we have to try to think about it more like you want, you want your, the strike of your foot, the strike, just like a sprint, you slap the ground. The objective isn't to reach out and grab it. It isn't to push it past me. It's to put, punch straight down, straight down, straight down, straight down, straight down. Straight down. Underneath you. Okay? That's what propels you, right? With that in mind, we kind of try to implement that as we walk, right? Um, it's kind of a weird thing to, to practice, but this is kind of how I do it. And then you, you like, I have, to com I have to completely like stop myself to kind of, because I'll get lazy on it. And I want to just, I like to, I like to reach. And when I, when you reach, you reach like this and then you fall on your heel and it's a breaking effect. Because there's friction and, you know, science and physics happens, right? It's not good for you. It's not good for your knee. It's not good for your ankles. It's not good for your knee angle all the way up into your hip and your low back and your sciatica, right? It's causing you problems, okay? So we have to think about, think about more so like you're almost going to strike. I don't want to say, uh, it's not, it's not flat-footed, but you're almost you're almost striking flat-footed, but you're trying to go for your, the, your toes. Um, but I kind of think about it like I just kind of walk in pace, in place with good neutral spine, shoulders up and back. And then I hold my neutral spine and I keep my chin. I make sure I don't do this, right? I hold this and I take everything and just kind of, kind of tilt it forward, right? And that's your walk. I'm trying to, I'm shortening up my steps a little bit, but that's like, I'm getting myself neutral. And then I just kind of like start leaning forward a little bit and you'll feel yourself start to go. Try to feel how and take note of how you're, you're striking straight down into the ground. And that, that, that strike or that press comes from your butt. Use your butt muscle to push the floor away, right? Push, 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 push. Set your foot down, push, then kind of get into it. And then as you start getting it rolling, think about being a ninja, right? Like my objective is to glide across the ground, right? I don't want anyone to hear me coming, right? I don't want, uh, I don't want to um, feel the impact, right? I'm going to use my, my the, the little bee muscles in the arches of my feet and my toes and my calf muscles I'm going to absorb everything. I'm going to be the most amazing shock system you've ever seen, right? While using the butt muscle to move, right? So it, we start that with neutral spine, walking in place, and we just gradually kind of lean it forward and feel what your stride feels like. It's not a reach. It's not a press behind you. It's a push straight down into the ground from your butt muscle. Okay, so this is how we walk properly. This is difficult to do, and I will caution you, okay? Anyone who's listening right now who uh, is going to run out and buy or order the footwear or whatever, be aware, especially if you're a runner, okay? Um, as you make this change, you are strengthening up muscles and tendons and ligaments, stuff that have not been used for a very long time, not at the level that you're going to demand from them now. So you need to be patient. If you are not patient and you rush and push too hard, too fast, as you make this change, you can incur shin splints or even worse, shin fractures. Okay. So here's what you got to do. A, there's body maintenance involved, right? 
I'm rolling my arches consistently. I'm rolling and massaging that muscle on the front of my shin. I'm rolling and massaging all the muscles in my calves, okay, daily. I'm taking care of them as I make this change because I'm starting to tax them a lot more, okay? I encourage you, if you're walking, the practice is walking with the shoes now, the new shoes and the new technique. Try to get somewhere that's soft. If you can, walk on the grass. Grass. Try to avoid the concrete, okay? You're going to notice very, like, what you, the perception you're going to have is that, oh, I, I tried them, but, yeah, they hurt my feet. No. Your shitty walking technique hurts your feet, okay? You have to improve the way you walk. You've been walking with these giant pillows attached to your feet that jacked your heel up and it gave you the ability to stick your leg way out in front and break with it and then just walk your little happy butt wherever you wanted to go, destroying your body. You have to, re you have to learn for the first time how to walk. The best way to practice this is barefoot. Just start practicing barefoot. Somewhere else, I go outside, go do it in the sand, go do it in the grass, check it first. Like if you're in the city or something and, you know, glass and needles and whatever, like walk the area you're going to mess around in first with your shoes on and make sure that you're not, you know, but then take them off. Even with your shoes on, try to step over in the grass or don't step in dog poo. Watch where you're stepping, right? But the softer is going to feel better. Again, this is a way we, we could restructure society and we could get away from a lot of this stuff. We don't have to be um, producing concrete paths everywhere. There are alternatives that are softer and more cushiony on the feet. So we can transition out of these horribly designed shoes with elevated heels and cushions in them and arch supports, right? We need to have the ability to strengthen our own arch because we need the ability to toe splay to achieve it, right? So we're being mindful of that. We're practicing the technique. We're being aware that we need body maintenance for the muscles that are being required to do more work than previously uh, demanded on them. Um, and if you're running, if you're a runner, okay, I would highly suggest you start with maybe 15 to 20% of what you would normally do. I know that sounds extreme. But I assure you, if you transition to running properly, and that means not heel striking, then this is going to jack your calves and your arch and stuff way, way up. You're going to need to do a ton of body maintenance, those things we just talked about, uh, which we go into more depth in other videos. Um, but you need to reduce your training volume. I know it's kind of, oh, I'm going to miss my workout. Find out that we can, there's other ways we can shake that up and kind of get you still get, keep you moving along and getting your results. But there's going to be an acclimation period where we're trying to catch up the weak stabilizing muscles and stuff that weren't being used for a long time. And if we don't, kind of like, like if this is your shin and you've got this tendon or whatever running along the bone, it's going to get so tight and wound up that it's going to start pulling like this. And as it pulls away, it's going to rip little chunks of bone. And then little cracks start going between these little chunks. And then you get little micro fractures and then you get shin splints and like, and then it's a the nightmare and you can't run at all for like seven months assuming you freaking get your shit together and adhere to the recovery protocol but if you're that person chances are the one that already overdid it you're not gonna you're gonna oh, i'm feeling pretty good i'm gonna go you're gonna re-injure you're gonna re-injure you're gonna re-injure and you're gonna, re and, you're gonna re and you're gonna be on a cycle and you're never gonna you're like oh yeah i switched those stupid shoes and now i've never been able to run again right no you made a mistake, 15 to 20%. I know it doesn't sound like a lot. There's other ways we can accommodate the stimulus you need to get to your goal. But you have to reduce the impact training initially until the little bitty muscles catch up and they've got the stamina and they've got the density the, and they've got the ability to perform at the same level as, as all the, you know, you're taking, you're basically taking your fifth or sixth string and you're trying to put them in a starting position, right? We got to, we got to slowly get them up there by training them. They need practice. You got to run them through some drills first, right? We're going to have some class. You're going to learn a few things and then we're going to put you in the starting position, right? That same modality 
as we address our own situation, as we transition from elevated heel, cushioned, arched footwear into Vibram style, zero drop, barefoot, wide toe box style footwear, right? And then we make that transition into walking better and not allowing ourselves to reach and plop, right? Um, the bigger picture here is that the aggregation of the sitting, the aggregation of the um, destructive footwear jacks up your squat. It removes access to ranges of motion and, and possibilities of your, your, your body function from the table, from your tool set. You can no longer do it, right? This is something you were born with. If you look at any child, any baby, they have beautiful squats. They don't think twice about it. They drop something on the ground, whoop, they go down, they grab it. No big deal. So what's the best thing you can do to start reclaiming that which was taken from you because of the construct that you've been given and told this is the way things are and this is how you have to live. What do you do? How do I get it back? Talked about a few of them. How do we sit? Floor, chair, standing. What do we do when we're in those positions? What can we do now that we're in those positions? What positions do we stay away from? What shoes are we wearing? How do we walk with the shoes that we have? Do we plop when we sit down? We're not plopping anymore though, right? Uh, so the, uh, the deal with the plopping is, uh, the, the objective is to basically, if you are a plopper, first and foremost, you should be able to just squat down, touch your butt, and stand back up, right? It's not, uh, that, sh that, that would be the, um, the objective, right? I should be able to do this. As I'm here, right, just like if I was doing a squat, I should be able to squat down. As soon as I feel, as soon as I feel my butt touch, boom, back up, right? Do, 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 touch up. What you would do is I'm coming down, 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 down. Oh, I can't hold it. Oh. Well, you try to resist that plop as long as you possibly can. And then when it's time to stand up, you're probably going to have to rock a little bit. But you want to try to use as little bit of a rock as you possibly can, right? So you're here. We do a little rock. We stand up to the top, right? That's how we address sitting, right? We resist the plop as long as we can. Then we use as little rock as necessary to get ourselves back up, right? Um, no more plopping. We're done with the plopping. As far as uh, reclaiming the squat goes, you know, we're working in that external rotation. We're changing the way we walk, changing what's on our feet while we walk. Um, we're changing our sitting habits. And then, uh, sorry, just reviewing my notes here, make sure I don't leave anything out on you. Oh, uh, so yeah, just like a kid, you know, they walk around and they, they sit down and squat like it's no big deal, right? So I've been doing the same thing. And I've suggested this before. Um, you could be like every time I cross a threshold in my house, right? Um, I go from one room to the next. Um, it could be my water. It could be the remote control. Whatever. Something that you could be your phone, if you're brave enough to sit it down on the floor and not touch it for more than a minute, right? <laughs> God forbid. So what, basically what, it's all the same. I try to approach it like I would a child, right? If I have the opportunity, I just be on the ground. I try to avoid the chair. I force myself into positions that are going to make me move a different way that I don't normally with water, remotes, whatever it is, I'll kind of just leave them or I go through a doorway. Just leave them wherever. You know, boom, there's one on the ground. Like, every time I want a drink, 
or I want to change my Netflix or I want whatever. I will go get the thing. I want to text somebody, right? I just walk up, squat down, pick it up, drink it, squat down, put it down, stand up. Just did two squats. How many doorways are in your house? How many times do you go through those doorways? Could you pick one doorway? Maybe not all. Yeah, that's too much, man. Yes, yeah, you're asking too much, bro. You fucking squatting. We were squatting all day. I got stuff to do. Busy. Can't be squatting all the time. You can do one doorway. Maybe it's your bathroom. Maybe it's your bedroom. Maybe it's your kitchen. I don't know. Pick one. And here's, here's the only thing I would ask of you. You're that person, right? Whatever one you choose. Make it the one you use the most because what we're trying to develop for you, what's called willpower, right? And the way we do that is A, we'd make ourselves do something we don't want to do. We make ourselves do that thing more than we actually wanted to do it. And we make ourselves do it longer than we intended, right? So I'm going to tell you, that person, pick the one door, one, that you know you're going to use the most. That's your threshold. If you're not going to do all of them, pick one. And then do more, do it longer. Through this, we develop willpower. Next thing you know it, you'll be at the gym in a squat rack, making huge gains, getting swole or thin or muscular or... Just look good naked, whatever you want. All of it can be achieved at the gym. It's just a variation of what type of stimulus do we need to provide to you to get you from where you are now to where you want to be. Uh, and given the circumstances of what's happening in the world, I would encourage you to find a coach that is capable of providing that service to you right in your pocket. Fortunately, at Barbell Method, if you like how we're interacting, you like the experience that we have here together, um, enjoy it on a personal level with virtual training. I provide this same setup, uh, same scenario, the same style of coaching and information delivery virtually to you anywhere you are. If you got your own gym membership, you got your own gym setup, or hey, you know what? I just want to do something in my living room. We got you covered here. We got the programming. We know the science behind it. We know how to get you from where you are to where you want to be the most efficient way possible while keeping you healthy and injury free. And we can deliver that experience to you professionally, anywhere, anytime, from any device. Check us out at barbellmethod.com. We're also on Instagram and Twitter at Barbell Method. And uh, you know what? That's really about all we got for you. As a bonus, though, lacrosse ball. We talked about that at the beginning. This is probably like the number one coolest, best thing you can buy. Obviously, we've shown you how you can use it when you're sitting down. We've shown you how you can use it when you're standing up, hitting the arches of your feet. Um, but even if I'm sitting at my desk, right, I can have this little guy, and I'm just kind of smashing it between my hands, working those thumb muscles that get really, really tight right? Um, I may have shared some of this with you before, but you know, we can, we can put it in here. We can work it. We can put it on the desk, smashing it down, right? You can, uh, while you're sitting uh, in the chair, for example, um, this will work. This works better if you have something hard, a hard service. Think, think like a, uh, a kitchen counter or something, right? Which, oh, if you were earlier, I think we were talking about uh, maybe possibilities for standing desks. If you're in a kitchen, use that book setup, whatever, get the monitor up. Sorry, random thought. And then bring yourself like a yoga block, just like you would at the bar. If you're standing, right, make sure you have something you can put your leg up on, switch between. I've showed, shown that in other videos, how you can kind of work in some cool stuff with that. Be creative, right? The idea is to try to consistently uh, keep activating your glute musculature is kind of the plan, right? But we can do hamstring uh, and high adduct, adductor work sitting on a ball. So, like, you get, if you didn't have the ability to get on uh, 
something that was like wood or uh, like a hard countertop. You could uh, you could slide a book to kind of give yourself something something hard to to uh, pin this against. Okay, but the idea would be to take uh, take the ball and you get it kind of high up in your groin, right? Pick your leg up, you set yourself down, and you can feel that you can put load on it, and I can feel oh god, I'm rolling back and forth, kind of do some circles on that spot. I can extend my leg, I can relax my leg, I can contract it, try to squeeze, Ugh, I can relax, I can roll, right? And I can get pretty much anything underneath my leg. If I have the ability to get that leg up, like that external position we were talking about earlier, I can, while I'm sitting here reading an email, I can have this ball, I can work this whole stretch of calf musculature here, I'm kind of working, boom, just using both hands, massaging down the calf, right? Um, maybe I just want to stick it underneath, try to get that shin muscle or the other side of my calf, right? And I'm kind of like pushing down on that, trying to work that out. Again, this is a lot better if you have something hard to press against. Like on the floor would be really great. Um, and a soft, cushy chair, this won't be as amazing. Uh, you have two balls. You can do the, no pun intended, you can do uh, one down on one side of your calf muscle, and then on the other side, you take the other ball up here, and you, you do like a sandwich, and you pinch it. Pinch your calf muscle. Also very, very good. These little suckers are so versatile. I mean, we're just talking about how to apply and use them in a chair or at a standing desk, right? Like, there are a bunch of things you can do on the floor, against a wall, in a doorway, on, the, on a corner, where you can get like your neck, your scalenes, your chest muscles, your back muscles. There's a, this thing can do, it's like, it's like having a masseuse in your back pocket. Wouldn't want to carry this ball in my back pocket, but you understand the concept. My name is Patrick. This has been another episode of Barbell Maintenance. I mean, no. This has been another episode of Body Maintenance. This is Barbell Method. <laughs> and I totally just screwed up the outro. But I enjoyed having you. Thanks for stopping by. And I look forward to seeing you next time.